welcome to Columbros, the podcast where bros talk about Columbo. I'm Jeff Grubb, and I'm joined by Mike Minotti, my fellow Columbro. How are you doing tonight, Mike? Feeling very Columbro-y. Me too, uh, which means, I think that means Italian and uh, observant, right? Those are the, that's what <laughs> makes him Columbro. Observant Italian. <laughs> observant yeah, Italian, Columbro, or Columbo. Uh, we are on our second episode, Mike, and I'm very excited because that means I, I have to like force myself to like watch Columbo. I don't get a lot of chance to watch TV, and I'm always very happy when I watch Columbo. This was another very good episode. Yeah, this is another fun one. Death Lends a Hand featuring Robert Culp as the killer. Robert Culp is going to show up quite a few times in the Columbo. Um, I think he's probably best known as being uh, in I Spy, that TV show with Bill Cosby. Mm -hmm. uh, but Robert Culp is just uh, fantastic here. He's fantastic in every Columbo episode I've seen him in. But yeah, like, again, this is episode two. And Columbo basically already came out in episode one, feeling like a fully formed idea. And like yeah, this they could had been... two pilots that that helped. Yes. Yeah, but this could have been episode fifty. <laughs> yeah, like, definitely. Like, they 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 got this nailed down so well so early. So yeah, the uh the this this the description here that they put out is blackmail turns to murder when a private investigator tries to profit from a wife's indiscretions. And that is a good setup for what happens. But, um, you know, as always, it's it's the the how catch him. And I found the how catch him on this one to be very thrilling because this is my kind of killer. Someone who is um, very competent and not actually super ready to dismiss Columbo that quickly. He does a little bit, but I, well, as we get into it, we'll see like that doesn't last very long. Eventually, he's just like, no, I'm going to just do my best to try it out with him because that's my, his natural stance. Uh, who uh, Carl Breimer, I think is how he says his name, uh, the, the killer here. He, his thing is just like, no, I pay attention to detail. And like, let's just get into it. Let's start there. That's how they introduce this character. He shows up and, and he is just getting a rundown of everything that is happening at his detective agency slash security firm. They're giving him a list of everything that's going on in there. And then he's like supposed to be meeting with this guy, Arthur Kinnicket. And, and they're like, he's not here yet. He's like, well, he's got another 30 seconds. Like, that's how he runs his life, down right. to the second. And then the guy shows up, and then things start happening. But, of course, you, you, mean, you know why they set, they set him up like that. It's the contrast. This is a wealthy, well-put-together man who pays attention to details. And, of course, he's going to be facing off against Columbo, who is uh, presents himself as not those things, right? Right. And, and uh, yeah, uh, Brimer here is also an ex-cop, uh, maybe a detective himself, right? So yep. he has, like... It's almost like a mere universe version of Columbo. Right. Someone uh, who went into the private sector, things like that. Like, a, you know, if we do continue to go with the the thing of Columbo, kind of this uh, angel from heaven that will make you face justice. This is a Brimer's kind of like a fallen angel a little bit. And like, you can see what that might look like. So it's so interesting here because big contrast from the first episode, which was this really heavily planned premeditated murder. This is going to be a crime of passion. This is not premeditated, even though. You would imagine that this this guy's going to be a more worthy foe for Columbo. He's kind of playing off balance here. Right. He he's not someone who would ever want to kill somebody. It's not wasn't his idea. You know what? Let's just get into it. So uh Kinnicott enter, enters his office. Uh before he does, we we see him um uh uh, Kinnicott being, let's see, Arthur Kinnicott. This is uh, uh the, a man who has hired Carl Bremer to spy on his wife. And he's coming for this meeting. He enters the office. He's like, all right, let, let's let's have this conversation. But before he does, we see that uh, that Brimer has set someone else that we don't see in another room to listen in on this conversation. So you already get, something's up. And we know this, this is like, there's murder involved in this. Like what's happening here? Is it like, is it that treacherous right out of the gate? It's not quite that treacherous. Turns out that, that Brimer is going to lie to Arthur Kinnicutt about the results of Kinnicutt hiring Brimer to look into his wife. Has my wife had any indiscretions? No, she has a, quote, clean bill of health, right? Mm -hmm. And that, that he says that to him, that is a lie. She actually has had one indiscretion, and he goes into the other room after having that conversation with Kinnicutt. And, and Brimer talks to him, or talks to the, to the wife and says, hey, I'm not going to tell him because I'm a moralist, but what he's really after is Kinnicutt owns a couple of newspapers, has a lot of dealings with important politicians, important people because of that, and he wants the wife, by, through, through a way of blackmail, to listen in on her husband's dealings and then report that stuff 
so that Brimer does not eventually tell the truth to to uh, Arthur Kinnicut. And this leaves her like she's shaken by this, but Brimer clearly is like, hey, this is some, I know what I'm doing here. I'm trying to pull, so pull one. So slimy in this. Like, yes. Trying to present it like, oh, no, of course I'm not going to. But, you know, by the way, it'd be real nice if you could, like, divulge secrets to me. Right, and he's you get the sense that he's used to getting his way from this kind of thing. Like, he's done probably done this before. And it, it, it continues to do it. And, you know, he tells her why it's so important. This is his stock and trade information, and she can get information for him. Cut to him going home. She let, leaves without giving him an answer. But no, she is waiting for him in his house when he gets home. And that throws him off a little bit. But he's like, as always, as this character will always do, he tries to play it cool and tries to understand what's going on here. And he's like, oh, hey, do you have an answer? And she's like, uh, I do. But first, I kind of want to like yell at you a little bit. But her answer is no. He uh, isn't too happy about that, but really he's like, okay, that's, this is pretty wild. I, he's like, you can tell he's still not sure how to handle it until she threatens to tell her husband, who again, a very powerful man with very powerful friends, this will destroy uh, Brimer's career. This will, th this will cause problems for him. And that's when he snaps, his temper takes over and he's, he stops her physically from leaving. She pushes him. And then he pushes back by slapping her with a backhand to the face with his left hand and his ring on, slaps her to the face, knocks her down, she hits her head, and she is dead. Yeah, uh, and pretty interesting stuff there. You know, they, they kind of build up, and it's very important to this episode that Brimer has this temper. And Culp is so good at that. You feel like this is a guy that's going to maybe blow up at any minute. Like, it takes every fiber of his being not to just be angry at all times. And it's kind of what makes him dangerous and it is also good seeing her like kind of like give it to him right like hey i know exactly what you're doing uh i'm just not gonna go along with it how He's, about that yeah and exactly she'll she, balance it puts him yeah it, it, she stands up for herself and, it, and then you know he is the master of his domain right like every, like every, you could tell everyone in his life is afraid of him and he's used to that you could tell like he's mad because he doesn't have kids to beat it's like what he seems like it's like oh, i just wish i had kids so i could be beating him with a belt it's like that he's that kind of guy uh so she she was playing with fire a little bit but i think i mean she, she did make technically i think the right move she called his bluff and and tried to go on it it's just he he blew a fuse and then in a way he never meant to kill her that it was an accident it was not a purpose but of course what happens next is he's going to cover up the murder and stage it as something else that happened uh that she either got killed somewhere else and then her body got moved somewhere else uh while he's while while he's doing this though the show kind of does it in a very stylized way yeah where very stylized we see it in his glasses at these like dual scenes of him like wiping down all the fingerprints and uh and, and putting her in the trunk and all this stuff and cleaning up the carpet it's really well done right yeah it's it, it almost bored him being a little too cute for me a little too stylish but it works it's fun yeah it, you know it's not something spielberg would have done in the first episode no, right no exactly so that's what i thought about it actually literally it was like this is not spielbergian right here this is someone kind of being cute being a little ex maybe more experimental it's not uh, something you see on tv too often especially at that time either it's a uh, this is like um you, you are you're showing and not telling and while that's something that's a it's a movie trait uh it's something on tv you a lot of times you end up having to tell not show because it's cheaper and like so clearly like this this is a show that had a budget at a time when a lot of shows didn't and they were using it and it's like okay i get you want to use that budget but you know what it's cool but you're right maybe a bit too cute uh all right so that's the murder that's how it happened we we know what happened he goes he does and he ends up taking her body he dumps it off in this like abandoned lot or something like that. Uh, he takes her rings, so it looks like a robbery, and and he leaves her there. And then we cut to Lieutenant Colombo getting pulled over in his shoddy old car because uh, his turn signal is out. It's the second time that day he's been pulled over. Uh, this is a man who does who appears not to care about details, and the truth is, in his own life, he doesn't. His his driver's license, in fact, is about to expire next week. He didn't know the cop told him when when he when he looked at it. So it's like. They're already setting it up. And it's one of the things I love about the show, Mike, is like these contrasts between Columbo and the killers. And it's I always love and it's a bit they do a lot. It always works. Columbo entering the scene and the police. They're always like, you can't be here. Get out of here. <laughs> and he has to be like, I know I'm a detective. Uh -huh. I should be here. And then they also say, oh, sorry. Uh, and yeah, he, we'll escort you. And that, yes. And, the, yes, and then he shows up to the scene and that doesn't stop. He looks oblivious. He's preoccupied, preoccupied with getting his, his cigar lit. Uh, e even like when the coroner's giving his report, he's not really paying attention to that stuff. Uh, but before he leaves, he gets a cigar lit. That's the most important thing. The second most important thing is he takes a look at the body 
And he's like, hey, her cheek, that's messed up. And like, yeah, we just told you with the coroner's report. He wasn't listening. And it's not that he doesn't listen. It's that he doesn't care. He's got, he's got his own way of doing things. And he's going to get, he's going to uh, assess things on his own. And he does that. And it, it, he seems to think that's very important. And it turns out that will, of course, be very important right. to how he solves this case. And another important, yeah, Columbus thing is he gets to the scene of the crime where he sees the corpse and immediately notices kind of the one thing that gets the track going. Yes, and so we don't hear about hear it at that time, but the, the cheek, the the bruise there, uh, there's a cut, and it looks like a cut that is a very a very particular shape, probably caused by something like a ring. Columbo does go to meet Arthur after this. Arthur Kinnicut, the husband of the victim, the much older husband of the victim, it's the person who hired a detective to see if she was cheating. She was. He doesn't know that. Uh, Arthur is immediately ready to provide his alibi. Um, this is. You know, especially convincing, I think, to uh, 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 to Colombo, because when you look at the victim and what happened to her, it's clear that it was a, an act of passion, almost certainly. And if Arthur Arthur is also probably not a man who, if he wanted his wife dead, probably wouldn't do it himself, would maybe hire a gunman. And, it, and no hired assassin is going to be like, I'm going to beat someone with the, in the face and hope that they fall down and die, right? That's just not right. how they're going to do. So Columbo immediately is like, okay, this this alibi checks out, and he probably didn't hire somebody to kill the, kill his wife. So he's like ready to accept that immediately. And Arthur's Arthur's a pretty fun character here because he's he is upset about this, and he's a powerful person. He's sort of he's polite to Columbo, but he's very clear. Like, I want this solved. I want to solve it immediately. The other police even make references to it. Like, oh no, the guy who owns all the newspapers is on this. We're really going to get beat up in the press if we don't do. Good job here. Columbo brings him the coffee, right? And there's that bit where Arthur kind of goes on this, you know, like rant about like how this needs to be done and needs to be done swiftly. He's kind of crass about, but then at the end, he's never like, rude. oh, by the way, thank you for the coffee. Yes, right? yes, exactly. Right. He, and he's, you're right. He's never rude to Columbo. He's like, I recognize you're doing your job, but I am someone who expects results. And it, it seems like a, a fair thing to say, even though, you know, I'm clearly he's throwing his power around a little bit more than other people could. I think he recognizes he has the ability to do that and how out of the norm that is. So again, I agree. Arthur Kinnicut, a very fun character. Uh, Arthur does mention, other than saying thank you for the coffee, the other thing he mentions to Columbo is that his wife had a clean bill of health in regards to her, her affairs. No, she did not cheat on him. She had a clean bill of health. Columbo repeats that phrase, clean bill of health. That's an odd way of putting that. And it is. <laughs> Uh, it absolutely is. The next scene, we immediately cut to round two of Columbo versus Arthur. Uh, this time it's happening at the Kinnicut Estate, a massive mansion uh, out in their backyard. Uh, oh, those Col Columbo mansions. That's so much fun in the show, just like seeing all these ridiculous 70s mansions. And seeing right? Columbo in these spaces, right? This complete schlub out of place. It always is a fun dichotomy there. Uh, this time, uh, it's, it's, it's sometime later, uh, and Columbo admits right away, we have no leads. We don't have any leads. We've got nothing. The working theory is that she was mugged and the killer ran off. Uh, but no one can explain how the body was moved and uh, because it appears it was moved. Everyone agrees pretty much that the killing didn't happen where the body was found. Columbo, however, thinks that she knew the murderer. And the reason he thinks that is because she was out at her beach house in the middle of the week, something she doesn't normally do. That's an important thing is the, uh, the, the Arthur and Lenore Kinnicut, that's the name of the victim, they have a beach house three miles away from uh from uh, uh Brimer's house which is also on the beach another beach house 3 miles away. She told the caretakers at their beach house that she had some thinking to do and went for a walk. And the next morning her body was found on the other side of town. Columbus and says 3 miles is so interesting cuz it's like close enough. Yes. But also kind of far away enough. Like yes. what you really going to walk over there? Mhm. Mm and uh, uh, he says uh, Columbus says it sounds like to me a woman who has a problem. And she was going out to deal with that problem. Uh, and, you know, just all the, those factors make us feel like she was going to meet somebody. Uh, Arthur's kind of not really having it, though. He's like, he takes Columbo inside to meet Brimer, who he has hired to cover the case as well. It's, of course, no, <laughs> yes, no one knows that Brimer uh, is involved in, in this. But obviously, Carthur, or Arthur's like, hey, I trust Brimer because he just really helped me out with something like setting my mind to ease. And I want to get him involved. Clearly, he's a professional and clearly, he has a lot of resources, as we'll see when we see his uh, his uh, uh, offices later. Brimer tries to play it off. Of course, I'm just consulting. I'm not competing. I'm not competing with the cops. I'm here to provide assistance, and we're not going to even like cover the same ground as the cops. I'm just here to help. Uh, Columbo asks if Brimer and Arthur know each other. Brimer mentions he did some personal investigation for Arthur, not like private security or anything like that. Columbo raises his eyebrows like, huh? But not, not much there. Uh, Columbo tries to be gracious. 
and then he notices something. Uh, it, 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 he, as always, though, he doesn't bring it up directly. Instead, he turns on the, oh, hey, I'm so superstitious. Um, <laughs> I'm just this idiot guy who has superstitions. Can I do a palm reading on you, Arthur? <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't, do, he doesn't do uh, Brimer's first. He doesn't do Brimer's first, although, you know, hey, let's check Arthur. Does Arthur wear a ring? You might, might as well check. Yeah, he has an alibi, all this stuff. But you might as well check every possible situation. Checks Arthur's hand. Doesn't feel any ring. That's fine. And does a palm read. And he does a palm read on Arthur as well. Or, um, um, excuse me, on Brimer. Yeah, hey, Brimer, sorry. Yes, and then uh, does a palm read on Brimer. And while he's doing it, it's like, he's just, he, he doesn't really let on. He just always says, hey, your 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 fate line. Oh, man, God, this is a man who's going to be important. Always buttering up anyone who thinks might have any involvement in there. Uh, that is, it, it, we, at this point, might not know exactly what's going on. But what he's doing there is he's trying to feel around for if they have a ring. Um, Columbus tries to leave. Goes into the closet by mistake. Uh, just <laughs> looking, yeah, looking like a fool. And, and like, we know Again, that uh, 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 that Brimer is not someone who suffers fools. Arthur Kinnicut also probably not that kind of guy. So there's this whole time during the palm reading when he's going in the closet, they're giving each other glances like this guy over here and scoffing, and that's right. just the classic Columbo, right? Oh, so good, it's fantastic, right? And like, especially because we know right then and there that Columbo almost basically has it figured out. Right? Yes, right <laughs> yes, he's got the most important piece. Like he knows something happened to her face that is abnormal. Uh, in terms of like e even getting like a, a punch to the face, like something is weird about this cut. And the only thing that really makes sense is a ring. So when Columbo talked to Brimer, he found out that Lenore took golf lessons with a local pro. And that leads Columbo to the man she was having an affair with. Columbo figures this out when he sees the golf pro always schedule Lenore as the last appointment of the day after <laughs> the first two sessions were in the morning. It's like, hey, that's weird. And the golf pro is just this this help, like a complete schlub it's, as well in terms of like. Right. It is not a worthy opponent for Columbo. <laughs> Columbo like eats this guy for breakfast and it's incredible. It's so much fun. Also a really fun thing. Absolutely. Like that. It's important to have both, right? You got to have the guy right. that's a worthy opponent, but you need to see what the alternative looks like in a world where it's just people who are completely incompetent. The golf pro is even like, the only thing I'm good at is banging checks. Like that's all I'm I got. Like, Give me a break. I love Oh, at one point, Columbo has to be like, hey, can I give you some advice? Don't say anything yeah, else. Yeah, about get a lawyer. Because uh, he was like doing himself no favors. Like he's lucky that Columbo like knew it wasn't him. He he notices he's not wearing a ring. And also he's so tanned that if he took the ring off, like there would, you know, you would know it's a tan line anyway. So he does not suspect this person. And this person's so nervous about it. And you can just feel that nervous energy. Because of course he would be considered, I'd be nervous if I was that yeah, guy. Yeah, yes, exactly. The, um, the golf pro, uh, it, 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 Columbo tries to set him off by saying, hey, can I get a golf lesson? And, and the whole time he's doing the, his whole thing where it's like, hey, yeah, you should get a lawyer and all this stuff. And then, like, after asking for help with his swing, oh, I, I you know, I could never take up golf. He hits a perfect drive off that. <laughs> but she's going to be just like, what the fuck is going on? This golf pro's got to be shitting his pants, I think, at this I point. Know, it's... it's really good stuff. Uh, meanwhile, Reimer has a, has have, uh, is having his significant resources focus on a, a random robbery. So look into that stuff. All these, like a dozen dudes that work for him, all looking into this. And they are, uh, uh, he wants them to say, hey, someone probably just randomly robbed them. Try to find someone who's in the area at that time. And then he gets a call from his secretary. Hey, Columbo's here. Who? who who's here? Who's that? <laughs> right? He's already forgotten Columbo. He's like, oh, right. Lieutenant Columbo, bring him in. Columbo has some theories. Specific, specifically about the cut on her cheek. It was probably from a ring on the hand. And since it was on her left cheek, it has to be from a backhanded blow from the killer's left hand, right? Meaning the killer is left-handed. Well, that's something. That's something to work from. Even Brimer's like, oh, wow, that's that's something. That's, you know, maybe you're, you're, you're kind of a wild guy. Maybe there's something there. It's not much to go on, but it's more than we had before. Columbo also thinks it wasn't premeditated. Uh, maybe the killer didn't even mean to do it. And then we see Brimer going... Wait, what? Like how? Wait, how, like that is like too specific. But again, it's like this is guy that's just spitballing. He probably doesn't have anything. Uh, Columbus says, "I don't think a man kills with his hands unless he's angry." I wouldn't be surprised when we find this guy to learn he has quite the temper. Uh, anyway, Brimer wants to digest this material and kind of sends him off before he does. Columbus, says, hey, that's just fine, but darn it, I can't find the receipt for the documents that I just gave you. That's why I came over here to give you these documents. I got to give you a receipt so we know that it's all good. Or I got, I got to get a receipt to take back to the thing. You know what? Can you just write one up for me? Here's a pen. And Brimer writes, starts writing, and he's writing with his left hand. And, and Columbo's like, of course, pleased with himself. And Brimer goes, 
well, I'll just write with my right one. I'm ambidextrous. I can do either. Doesn't really eliminate him, but it was a very interesting thing. Uh, another interesting moment. Where it's like, I love how, the, how they come up with these situations where Columbo just gets another little piece of information. Yes, exactly. Uh, all right. So, Columbo, before he leaves, like, there's, this is still that scene where he's still talking to me, having him sign with his left hand. He says, hey, uh, my wife, she wants to go move down the beach, or, or maybe it was his sister or something like that. Uh, you live by the beach. Well, you know, what's it like? He's like, who told you I live by the beach? No one. I noticed the chrome was worn down on your car. You know, the salt just eats away at that stuff. And he's like, you're a very observant man. He's like, but yeah, you'll, you'll love living down uh, at the beach. It's a great place. As long as you're okay with the chrome getting worn down on your car. Uh, the final punch of this round comes as Columbo notes uh, that Brimer and the Kennecuts are practically neighbors for their beach property. And, and Brimer's like, no, it's a couple miles. It's a couple miles. He's like, wow, that close. Isn't that a coincidence? That close, yeah. This, this is case is just Columbo. full of them. Yes. Co full of coincidence. This is Columbo letting him on like, hey, I am kind of on to you, and I want you to be a little bit kind of, you know, wary. And a little right, because he never balance. knows what's going to work, right? Like, what's yeah. going to cause a, a killer or a potential uh, a suspect to go off kilter? Like, is it going to be me letting them hinting that I'm on to them? It's, it doesn't. That doesn't fully work here. He does, Primer doesn't make a ton of mistakes at this point. It takes some time, but you never know. And Columbo's always just poking, just poking. And this is a great moment of that. Uh, all right. So then we, yeah, we catch up with everybody's favorite fuckboy cough pro. This is, as Mike <laughs> said, he doesn't have the, uh, the, the, the suntan around his early, you know, the farmer's tan around his finger. So Columbo knows he wasn't ever wearing a ring. He didn't take a ring off and hide it. Uh, it, but he does uh, uh, kind of catch up with him again and confirms, uh, oh, yeah, 100%. Yes, I was banging Lenore. I was doing that. And I was going to run because I don't have an alibi. I was at home watching TV, no calls, no company. And that's why I decided to run. So he was very re relieved to hear Columbo say, I know you didn't do it because you don't have that farmer's tan. Uh, that, that's like a, another hey, OK, every reason to like take this person off the table. And they have, that's how Columbo gets to that point. But the pro does give an important bit of information. I think we were being followed. In fact, I, you know, during one of our trips, I said it to her. So that, that tall guy with a crew cut, ex-Marine type, I see him everywhere. And Columbo's like, hmm, okay. We also see, at that same time, someone is following both of them in the, at this point, and it's someone who calls Brimer and reports on their whereabouts. Brimer is now officially worried about Columbo. Right, uh, he's got all the right details here. He, he's talking to the right people. He's putting all pieces together. Yeah, at, the, at this point, he is totally in the Columbo shit. Brimer uh, is f fully worried about this, like I said. So what does he do? He calls a 1970s beefcake, that crew cut guy, Marine type. He's a big, just hunk of man. And, yeah. and Brimer's like, hey, I got a, a job for you that may complicate your life. He's like, okay. And I think he's uh, the idea is I'm going to send him out of town and keep him busy so that uh, Columbo can't track him down. That seems to be what happens here, right? That's exactly it. I think he's just, he was worried Columbo's going to talk to him. Right. And figure stuff out there. So just get him out of town. Uh, Columbo shows back up at Brimer's office and is getting a tour this time. A full Ooh. tour of the place. The place is decked out. It's got a state-of-the-art computer with more impulses than in the brain, which is not possible. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that's not, there's still, a, like, you could put all the computers to, together in the world today, and it still wouldn't have as many interconnections as the brain. But it's a TV show. They say shit like that. It reminds me of that episode of Simpsons. There's a flashback where Professor Fink is showing, like, an old computer that takes up a room. Like, I predict in the future, only the richest kings and queens of Europe will be able to afford a computer. <laughs> <laughs> I love seeing the old computer. It's, uh -huh. it's, yeah, it's really fun that they're like, oh, this is our how we're solving crimes with these big computers. <laughs> uh, Columbo also learns about their custom design company cars with telephonic capabilities, all this stuff. There's also a metal detector in the lobby of Brimer and Associates. Uh, and explain why they need this, though. The guy giving the tour starts talking about some oil company guy that came in there and he had a gun on him and set it off. Uh oh. Brimer overhears this, comes out, and just chews this guy out for spilling uh, secret details about their clients. And it's not like it's not just a regular chewing out. It's a I have a bad temper chewing out. Yeah. Columbo's eyebrows go way off his head. They just floating above his head. Like, oh yeah, there's this is this, this is my guy, isn't it? And, right. and Brimer's so sloppy here, but he can't help it. Like that's just his that's, personality. That's flaw. who he like, is. You, you, and can, it, you can tell immediately he's like, I shouldn't have done that in front of Columbo. What's wrong with me? Right. And, but you're right. That's who he is. And also, like you know, he's right. You can't talk about your clients like that in that business. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, it's it's for him. It's like a completely fair reaction. But he get, he's giving the game up, and you can't do that with Columbo. Uh, Columbo does note that Lenore was having an affair right in front of Brimer. He mentions that, uh, and that they thought they were being watched. But that got him thinking. What if Kinnicut hired someone to watch his wife 
And that person lied to him and said, your wife has a clean bill of health, quote unquote. <laughs> now, this per- now this person, whoever it is, has the perfect position to blackmail Mr. Mrs. Kennecutt. Now, what if she refuses and says she's going to tell her husband? Now, that would be a very compelling motive. And that's like the whole thing right there. Yes. And Brimer, that's the whole thing. He's got the motive. He's got it down to a T. And Brimer does a good poker face. He does like he's clearly worried, but it's not like some of the, the, these other killers will eventually see or even the, uh, the killer in the first episode where it's like once he gets a blow like that, he was way off, off, off center here. Brimer's still professional, still, still someone who was a former cop knows just don't give him anything. He needs evidence. He doesn't have evidence. We're good. And as long as I don't admit to it, there's almost no evidence to be had to, pro- to connect me to this. So we'll, we'll be good. Uh, but, you know, Brian, so Brimer's answer is, Lieutenant, you have a marvelously convoluted mind, right. but do you want a job? Come work yeah, for me! By the way! Yeah. <laughs> Come work for me and just stop this whole thing. Yeah, specifically this is... stop this case. I got more important things to put you on. He's, yeah, and he goes like, oh, would I still work on the Kennecut case? And he's like, mm, mm. let me think about that. Ah, oh, nah. <laughs> nah, I got guys perfectly capable of that. There's more important things I need Incredible. you on, Columbo. I'll triple your pay. I'll triple your pay. <laughs> it's like, oh. And like, hey, go to Columbo, because hey, that is triple pay. That is a lot of money for a much easier job. Yeah, but what does God's perfect killing machine have to do with money? He doesn't need that. No. <laughs> He's got no, a wife at home. He's all good. That's not what makes his world go around. No, it doesn't. Uh, Columbo leaves. On the way out, he he sees that associate again. He says, hey, Primer has quite the temper with a guy... Or he's like, oh, do, 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 have you been true out like that before? And the guy says, you know, Brimer does have quite a temper. When a guy like that lets go, just stand back. Columbo gets the guy to keep talking about, hey, I got a job offer. offer. Uh, you know, he says he's talking about a lot of money, triple my pay. Like, uh, anyone else get paid that much? And he's like, oh, the guy's like, hey, yeah, maybe Leo. And then <laughs> Columbo does a great, I, oh, I think I know him. Tall, crew cut guy, ex-military type. Yeah, he's the teacher pet, at least this month. It's like, okay, there we go. Hey, how there can I find go. this guy? Well, he's not in the office. I'll get you his home address. And he's like, just don't tell the boss. He's like, oh, well, of course, I would never say anything about that. So now he's on to Leo. But as you pointed out, Mike, he's gone. Like, he's been sent out of town. And the wife and the child who he, who Columbo's actually able to track down don't know anything. Columbo doing the very creepy thing of, like, I'm going to play with your boy. <laughs> there's, there's a few of those at Columbo's. And I, part of me is like, I, I, is this just Columbo being naive or is this just 1970s innocence? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, he, I think he knows he's able to turn on the charm of, of setting people, like, letting people know that he's not a threat. And that happens very quickly. So he's able to do situations like this. But, yeah, it's like it's always still weird. It's a... It's a- it's a bit of Columbo lore where sometimes he mentions having kids and it's it's unsure if he actually does have children or just one of his like, you know, oh, yeah, my cousin, he's he was in the Marines, too, kind of a thing. Yes, um, but he's, he's very good with kids, obviously. Right. And, 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 and the, you know, it's a, he's just it's because he's good with people and he's able to extend that up and down the stratus of different kinds of people for, for sure. We do know for sure. And we'll find out at the end of this episode. Columbo is willing to completely fabricate things and lie and put things in certain positions. You just. We don't really see that. It's all part of the mystery of like, what is Columbo capable of and what's going on in his life? We don't ever see his wife, who knows about kids, all this other stuff. And anytime he does maybe something that's outside of the purview of being a cop, we also don't see that either, even if it does happen for sure. Um, so uh, this leads uh, Columbo to like, okay, I, I kind of know what happened here, but how do I get him? How do I get the killer? So Columbo goes to renew his license and he's thinking about this and he's suddenly struck when he sees a woman wearing glasses. Lenore was wearing glasses in a photo, but when the body was found, she wasn't wearing glasses. There was no glasses on her body either. No, no glasses found whatsoever. Well, when he goes to ask Arthur Kennecott about this, the victim's husband, he mentions she hasn't worn glasses in years. She wears contacts now. They, and they go looking for her contacts in her cases. They aren't in there. So she was probably wearing them when she died. And Columbus like, I got nothing else here. Can I dig up the body? Can we dig up the body and see if she was wearing her contacts? Maybe they got knocked out. And if they got knocked out, maybe they got knocked out at the scene of the crime. And if we can maybe just come up with a couple ideas of where that happened, maybe we can find the contact and then we'll know what happened. Uh, Kennecutt says, yeah, do whatever you got to do. They're digging up the body. Brimer shows up at the exhumation uh, in a different car because his won't start. His car won't start. So he's in a different car. Shows up and he tells Arthur that it's more than a long shot that the contacts fell out at the scene of the crime. This is kind of silly. 
Well, you know what? And he seems really against. He seems really against this. Huh? He seems really against it, and he's uh, offended on behalf of Arthur and uh, from being a cop in the past. He's like, oh, well, this is not how we would have done things back in my day." Well, Columbo goes to talk to the to the coroner who has got the body out. Turns out the right contact lens did come out, and sure, it could be in a million places. But what if it's at the the crime scene? And sure, they don't know where that is. But Columbo has some ideas. He just wishes. And Brimer's sitting right there that the killer knew about this and had to try to find the lenses before the cops. Man, wouldn't that be great? Cut to <laughs> Brimer going through his carpet with a flashlight. That's the next scene. Uh, yeah. Fully, again, that it's, it, 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 Columbo's just about landing those punches, body blow, body blow, body blow, until suddenly they're on their heels and Brimer 100% on his heels, right? Yeah. Man, I forget they had contacts in the 70s. <laughs> it seems like too, I think back then they were actually glass. And it yeah, was when, like a whole when thing. did contacts lenses and boob jobs happen? They probably happened like way <laughs> earlier than I think, actually. Probably. <laughs> I think you're right. Uh, but yeah, it is very funny just watching, just watching him go crazy on this shaggy carpet, the shaggiest carpet you can ever imagine, looking for this contact lens. Absolutely freaked out, worried like crazy. Uh, okay, so Columbo shows up as he's going through the, the carpet, and he says uh, no to the job offer because he wants to stay on the Kinnicut case. And then he tells him right to his face, if I solve it, you're going to be the first to know. <laughs> 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 Just a great line. Just yeah. a great calling your shot. I really like that. Uh, Brimer's like, okay, uh, he gets Columbo to leave. He's like, okay, whatever, whatever, you're not taking the job. Uh, so he's like, and he knows, again, he, he thinks, he probably knows Columbo, knows it's him. But he also knows Columbo, Columbo needs evidence. And now he, he thinks the only evidence is this contact lens. It's all about that. If I take care of that, I'm in the clear. So this is number one priority. Brimer realizes, well, it's probably not here. Maybe it fell out when I put her in the trunk and drove her across town and dumped the body. So I got to get in my car, which is actually getting fixed right now. So he breaks in to check on the car. He gets in the lens. And wouldn't you know it, there's a contact in there. And boom, the lights turn on. Columbo jumps in with a bunch of cops right next to him and Arthur Kinnicutt. They find him. They, you know, they ask him a couple things. And Brimer's like, oh, I'm just looking for papers. I'm looking for papers. And he goes to like, oh, we're well, okay. I'll go down to go downtown and answer questions with you. Sure, I'm being weird right now. Let's just get this over with. Tries to drop the lens. They wrestle away from him. And that's it. He's got to admit right here, right now, just like they always do on Columbo. I killed her. It was an accident. Man, Columbo, I wish you would have just taken the job. Yeah. It's yep, a, got him. Got him. It's a good, it's a really good moment. Uh, I, I really like the worthy kind of opponents. And this is one of the, it's early on, but this is a really good example of what a worthy opponent looks like to Columbo. Exactly. Yeah, Robert Culp is fantastic. There's a reason they bring him back to be a killer again. He's just very good at this. Uh, there's something threatening about him. There's something that makes you uneasy. He's kind of unlikable. <laughs> He's just kind of unlikable in an effortless sort of way. Now, yes. there is an important There's a coda kind of here. We get at the end, we find out that basically Columbo sort of sabotaged and worked the scene to get... So yes, and you're allowed to, you're, I mean, again, we don't ever see that. He never admits to doing that, but the lens, she had both contact lenses in. He lied. She, when he came back to the car and said one of the, the right lens fell out, that wasn't true. And then, so he, when he's telling this to Arthur Kinnicutt, Arthur's like, well, the, what the hell? That's impossible. Whose lens is this? Columbus goes, well, I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> no, he put it there. He 100% put it there. Like, that's how far he was willing to go. And he sabotaged the car because Arthur's like, well, what if the car wasn't broken? Well, when I was a kid, I was kind of a shithead. I would put potatoes in people's exhaust pipes and the car would be fine, but it wouldn't start. It's like, oh, that's a fun story. So he sabotaged the car. He put, the, put a random contact lens in there and he let the rest of it kind of take care of itself. And he's never got to ever talk about that stuff. That doesn't matter. He got his man. He, had, he went as far as he had to because he's right. The justice had to be done. And... Yeah, it, it's it's it cool. is interesting because yeah, because when we see Columbo do this a bit more, so I sometimes have mixed feelings on it because it is it's planting of it. Yes, uh, that is you know illegal and in the wrong hands. It can be very dangerous. Now, you know, you, you, again, you have to think, well, it's justified because it's the only way we can get this murderer, right? This awful person who murdered a person, we have to catch him. So here's what we're gonna do. I maybe prefer a world where you just write the story in a way that Columbo is just able to kind of get his man like maybe the contact lens did just come out and the contact lens was just in the trunk yeah something like that maybe that is a little too cute like what incredible 
coincidence. Like, like, uh, you know, Brimer's right in a way earlier when he's like, this is ridiculous. What are the odds of that? Well, yeah, they're, they're, really they're, they're really low. Yes. Especially that you're, there's any, like, it fell out. It's not, right. there's not a hundred places. It could be a hundred places. It could be in 10 million places. It's like, the, the, it's more than a needle in a haystack. Trust me, I, I've had kids with contacts that fall out. And I, I'd spend days trying to find them. Um, but, but, you know, I think Colombo, they, they tried to like do both here. They tried to have their cake and eat it too a little bit where he did this thing. And that's planning evidence if they use it as evidence. But he's like, the contact doesn't matter. It's his behavior that matters. That's what we're going to use in court. Like, showing him doing this, we probably won't even use, they, he doesn't say this, but they probably won't even use the contact lens in the actual case. They're going to use the, the, the strange behavior, and then he admits it. He got him yeah, to admit it. Thing, right. Well, that's the whole point with, uh, you know, falsified, or uh, the planted evidence, you're trying to force right. confession. Yep. Which, again, you're not technically allowed nope. to do that. Yep, definitely. So, yeah, he's been in the rules, and we don't see that. We have to sort of imagine yeah. that. And I, I think I like the fact that they make us imagine it, but I agree with you that sometimes that's going to be, uh, yeah, it'll be a little gray and sometimes more than gray. But, yeah, second episode, boy, a strong start to a, a really good show. Just two yeah. really great episodes. Obviously, I think the first one is is one of the best ones ever made. But this one is definitely up there as well, one of my favorites. Yeah, still also a lot of fun. Robert Culp, just uh, incredible here. And that's so much of what comes down to like the difference between a good episode, Columbo episode and a great Columbo episode is the killer and how much you know, how much of a fun scumbag are they to watch and how great are those Columbo versus the killer moments. And there are so many good ones here. Uh, that first meeting, the dinner scene in the car, just every single time you have one of those scenes, you look forward to it and you have a lot of fun. Yep, yep. It's all about, again, about those body blows. And... uh and the battle, battle of wits, and this one really was a battle of wits. And so, I mean, you're going to get ones that are uh, even more epic than this, with like Leonard Nimoy uh, eventually and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, okay, that's like maybe my favorite episode. Uh, it's it's fantastic. So that can't wait. And then you get the ones that are like a bit more random, like fucking Johnny Cash, the Johnny Cash episode, where this yeah. guy just doing his best. And I like that too. It's a whole other yeah. flavor. Uh, but yeah, it's good stuff. All right. I have, a, I have started a document here called Ranking Columbo. Jeff, uh, this episode, Death Lends a Hand, better or worse than Murder by the Book? I think Murder by the Book is going to stay number one for now and probably for a very long time. Uh, it's, a, it's a great episode of TV. If you never, if you don't want to watch all of Columbo, I would still recommend watching that episode forever. Uh, this one, a worthy number two, and it has a stretch chance to be number two for a very long time. Very good episode. Uh, um, Death Lends a Hand. Awesome. Fantastic. How about you? I think I agree. Yeah. Murder by the Book is still a Stone Cold classic. I think maybe like, the, the, again, the ending is like a little bit like, oh, do I want to see Columbo be this morally gray? Maybe, maybe I'm a bit, uh, a, a bit too soft. I think, uh, you know, this is my second time watching this episode. I 100% felt the same way as you my first time. This time I was a little bit more able to, I do this a lot with, with TV shows and media, Mike. I'm able to uh, do the, the retconning work in my own brain where I could sure. sort of be satisfied with it if I want to be satisfied with it uh, and kind of meet the show halfway a little bit. Uh, but I think that's a completely fair take on, on this. Because, yeah, I think yeah, you do. I mean, the, the contrasts are important. The contrast is what one of these people is trying to bring justice. The other person is trying to escape it. And one person is from a high status uh, in society and the other one's just a working man. And you kind of want the working man to be honest, uh, fully and completely. And when they play around with that, that's dangerous. But for this right. one, I'm like able to explain it away enough that I'm still okay. There will be other episodes where it's honestly handled worse than this. Yes. But we'll get to this. Yep, absolutely. This uh, show has a whole spectrum of quality, but we'll get to all of it eventually. All right, Mike, Columbro, I appreciate you hanging out with me talking about Columbo. Yeah, a lot of fun. And next time we will be talking about the episode Dead Weight. Finally, a, a nautical episode. Let's go. <laughs> yes, let's, have, let's make it happen. Thanks for listening, everybody, and thanks for watching if you're on YouTube. Till next time, have a good one. Take care of yourself and Columbro.